Packers are one of the most interesting teams in the NFL because just last year they were trying to compete for a Super Bowl, but even with Aaron Rodgers being old enough to be the dad of some of their players, they were the 11th youngest team in all of football. This year, they're going to be even younger because Jordan Love is about 15 years younger than Aaron Rodgers, so that's going to make a major difference. So they're really exciting to watch this year, but also moving forward. Despite entering the NFL through the 2020 draft, Jordan Love has less than 100 career pass attempts to his name and just one start so far. So the sample size is ridiculously small, and I would be grasping at straws if I really try to give any real analysis of him. But one thing we can go off of is what he was like coming out of the draft, because after all, he is basically just an old rookie, and with that said, I think he was a little bit underdrafted because he was viewed as a late first-round quarterback, at least by the consensus draft board, and he was drafted late in the first, but I think his talent was a bit higher than that. It's just more so he was known as being a quarterback that was going to need a little bit to develop, and he has had time to develop. Aaron Rodgers was the perfect quarterback to sit behind, at least from the standpoint of there being a guaranteed elite level of play that ensured Love was not going to have to play earlier than he needed to. And now Love is going to be able to show people what he's made of. I think there's a better chance than some people would have you believe that he can be a legitimate starting quarterback in this league because his arm talent is pretty ridiculous. It's not at a Patrick Mahomes level, but I would say it's like 90% of what Mahomes gives you as he has a cannon for an arm and can throw off of multiple different platforms, which is exactly what you like to see in today's day and age. So there's a lot to like about him. He's also pretty darn athletic, so he has that going for him as well. But again, there's basically no film on him. There's no way to feel confident that he's going to be good or a bust at this point. What we can feel more confident in, though, is how good is the supporting cast for him. The offensive line is going to be something that definitely works in his favor, as they rank third in pass blocking, and a bit worse, 22nd in run blocking, according to PFF. But obviously, it's going to matter more how they're protecting you as a young quarterback. And he's going to have about as much time as any young quarterback is in this league. So that's really nice. If he needs, you know, that extra half a second to process what's going on, he's going to get that more often than not. David Bakhtiari, one of the absolute best tackles in the NFL and has been for several years at this point. They're also returning all five of their starters, which is really nice because cohesion is so, so essential for the offensive line. They have not one weak link in pass protection across the entire board. So that's really great for Love. He's not going to have to worry about you know, my right tackle is weak. I'm going to have to watch pressure off of there more than anywhere else. No, that's not going to be an issue. It's good all around. So that's really nice to have that great foundation in place. A place where the foundation isn't so strong, though, is their weapons. Because Christian Watson showed a ton of promise as a rookie where... He averaged 15 yards per reception, which is exceptional, and he only had 611 yards on the season, but if you look at from week 10 onwards, which is when he started to build that rapport with Rodgers, he was on pace for 1,100 yards as he averaged 65 yards a game, so that is really good stuff, and it's a bit early for him because... He has all the athletic potential in the world as someone who's 6'5 and is massively fast. So that's a great combination to have. But he's also showing that he has that refinement as well. He can run the deep routes. He can adjust his speed to get open deep downfield. After him, though, it's a bit rough because Romeo Dubs did not show a ton as a rookie. And he's going to be their number two receiver 
There's also some promise with Jaden Reed, who was their second round pick this year. So they do have some talent in the room. It's just not very well established at this point. There's also at tight end Tucker Craft and Luke Musgrave, who they just drafted as well. I'm not too certain on how early they're going to be able to produce because tight end is a position that historically takes a very long time to develop, but they are players with some potential, so that is nice. They can grow with Jordan Love as he ages and becomes more refined as a player, so everybody's going to be getting better with time, and you love to see that they're all on that same trajectory, which is very nice. You can't forget, too, they also have probably the best running back duo in all of football as Aaron Jones is a top 10 running back and AJ Dillon is a top 10 number two running back. So they are really nice at that position. They'll be able to help alleviate some of the pressure off of love, which is great because between the offensive line and the great running game, he's going to have something in place for sure. There's also of course two that bona fide number one wide receiver, which is so, so important. So there are some things, it's just kind of a lacking in depth for them because after Watson and their running backs, it's a lot of question marks. Shifting to the defensive backs, there's a lot to like because first and foremost, they have Jair Alexander, who's one of the foremost corners in the NFL, and he gets it done in every way imaginable. He's great in run defense. He can really tackle in open space, and he's good as a man guy, and he can also play their soft zone really nicely. So he just gets it done in every way you would possibly imagine. Then after him, Rasul Douglas is a great number two. He's one of the best number twos, I would say, in the entire league. So that's a very nice combination there. Eric Stokes struggled a little bit this past season, but he was really good as a rookie, so I would say there's still a lot to like in regards to him as well. So they're three corners deep, which is what you need to be in today's day and age. Nickel is the new base defense, so you're always going to be having three corners out there. Then after them, Rudy Ford, I think, is one of those sneaky good players that if you asked 100 people, who Rudy Ford is, I would say most of them aren't even going to know, but he's an under the radar, a good corner or a good safety that sort of plays like a corner. He's really good as a coverage guy. He's not as great in run defense, but he's very rangy. He gets it done in the coverage aspect very nicely. Darnell Savage, I'm not very high on. I don't think he's a good fit for the Joe Barry defense because I think he's meant to be that single high safety that's very rangy and can cover the third of the the defense deep downfield. And Joe Barry is not asking anybody to do that. He's playing very conservative defenses. So I don't think there's a great mesh there. And I think that holds Savage back quite a bit because Savage really does have a ton of athletic potential, and he has shown that he can cover. It's just he's not asked to cover in ways that is conducive to his success, and I think that's why he struggled in recent years. Moving to their defensive line, I really like what they have because first and foremost, they have Rashawn Gary, who is an elite pass rusher and one of the best edges in the NFL. He has some of the best power you'll ever see for an edge guy. And it doesn't stop there on the edge room because Preston Smith is a really solid number two. He also has some really good power at 265. And they have more beyond that as well. They just added Lucas Van Ness, who's going to be a really solid number three, in my opinion. He was a definitive first round talent. They also have Kingsley and Agbari who is a great fourth option in an edge rotation. After them, the interior is really stout as well. Kenny Clark is a monster's pass rusher on the interior. TJ Slayton, a solid nose tackle. And Devontae Wyatt can really be a nice piece for them moving forward because he had a pretty solid rookie season. He showed some promise as a pass rusher. And I think he has the ability to be ability to be a good run defender as well. 
So there's a lot of potential on this line. And really, they're deep as well. So it shouldn't be an issue of them underperforming due to being tired. They're going to be in a really solid rotation. As for their linebackers, the optimists would tell you that this is perhaps the best pass defending linebacking duo in all of football because both Devondre Campbell and Quay Walker are exceptional in pass coverage. And though they don't do it a whole lot, they're both solid pass rushers as well. So they can do it in any way against the pass. The issue is, though, they're both pretty poor as run defenders because they're both smaller guys and just not super physical against the run. So that is something that's going to hold them back. And if you have followed the Packers, you'll know that for years they've had trouble against the run, which is partly a Joe Barry issue. He doesn't focus on defending the run basically at all as a defensive coordinator, but it is also something that the defensive line is not exceptional in defending the run, and the linebackers are poor against it, so you have that together, and that's pretty problematic. Quay Walker, I believe, does have the potential to improve because, according to PFF, he was 79th out of 85 linebackers against the run, just aside from it being hard to repeat as that poor of a run defender, I think he has potential to improve as well because he's 241 pounds. So he's the heavier of the two linebackers. Campbell is 232 pounds. So Walker is a little bit light for being the heavier of the two. But in this day and age, that's not especially light for a linebacker. So maybe he adds just a little bit of weight to him and he can be a little more burly against the run and aggressive against it or maybe he just refines his technique and takes better angles which is an issue that he was taking he was not pursuing the play in the most advantageous way and I think that's something that coaching can really address and I think it's just something also that with more time you get better against so He has potential for sure. Lastly, for their coaching, I think Matt LaFleur is one of the most underrated coaches in recent memory, as I think he's a bona fide top five coach. And he does it in all of the really smart, intricate ways, such as he's fifth in fourth down aggressiveness. He is ninth in use of motion on offense, which is a very easy way to increase the efficiency of running and passing as it shows what the defense is in, be it man or zone, and it lets you get the exact formation you want, because you can always just re-motion again with the knowledge of what the defense is going to be in. So it's something that basically has no downside to it, but is not used nearly enough by most teams. And in addition to that, they're 11th in play-action use, which is, again, just a little way to increase the efficiency of your passing offense because defenses are always taught to play the run first. So it opens up things downfield for the passing because the linebackers are going to be a little more shallow than they otherwise would be, and it just makes everything a little bit easier on the offense. So LaFleur is a genius in my eyes. He does everything he can to make the quarterback's job as easy as can be, and that is the mark of a great coach. Defensively, though, I'm a lot lower on their coaching because I think Joe Barry has the right idea with his scheme in that he likes to make sure everything's covered deep downfield and make the offense dink and dunk their way to the end zone. But the issue is offenses are smart enough to realize that that's all he knows and he doesn't play with any sort of aggression, and he always allows the shallow pass to be open and doesn't really play against the run either. So it becomes problematic, and there's just no adjustment regardless of what the situation is, and that's really frustrating to see because there's a lot of talent on this defense, and it just doesn't really show because they're never put into the right positions. They could be a lot better with better coaching, and I think this is probably going to be Barry's last year as a defensive coordinator, if I had to guess. To summarize, there's a lot to like in Green Bay. 
The only things that give me any sort of hesitation with them is the fact that we don't know just how good Jordan Love is going to be. And he also doesn't have the most concrete of playmakers at his disposal either, which is not a very good combination. And aside from that, though, there's also the issue of defensively, they are not adjusting like they should. So there are some real issues, but basically everything else works in their favor. They have a fantastic offensive line. They have a ton of talent on defense. I would say their talent is about as good as anybody's in the league on defense as a whole. It's just they're not always going to show it. And that's really frustrating, but maybe this is the year it all comes together and they show everybody just how good they could possibly be. Those are my thoughts on the Packers. Be sure to let me know what yours are. And also be sure to like and subscribe for more NFL and NBA content.